Hello again, welcome to another edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Paul Shrimp here with Eric Spillboy. Bantering quite a bit. Yes. We said lots of things we can't say. Now we're going to get into the things we can say, right? <laughs> Is that the idea here? That's how we so, warm up. That's yeah. <laughs> how so we warm up. Uh, which would be infinitely more fascinating, but also probably get us out of a job. So, well, you have some good news, or some, some good, news to share. Some news to share. Yeah. yeah. So we just got. Uh, this is you're getting this on Saturday, and we're a couple of days in advance of that. But this week, uh, we got word that uh, DTN, a company that makes, um, it's been famous for weather for for many many years, um, purchased Spensa Technologies, which. They do uh, weather modeling and pest detection, and they have the, the pest traps and so forth. So uh, <clears throat> I guess the interesting thing is it's, once again, it's two really, really long-time established companies. Again, DTA, DTN being having done weather for, for so long, and Spensa emerging from a Purdue incubator program into you know commercialization, which has been kind of a slow process that they've, they've built up over time. Uh, these, so they're two proven, obviously proven technologies. And this really gives DTN some tools um, from the standpoint of uh, modeling and, and, and detection of pests. And I'm interested to see how the two fit together, but I think on, on its face, it makes a lot of sense for these two companies to, to come together. So we'll, we'll see how that manifests itself in the future, but, um, but I guess, you know, congratulations to, to the folks at Spensa. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's probably a very good opportunity for them and um, an opportunity to see that technology expand even further. And I'm sure consolidation, of course, going on in the marketplace and more in precision. And, you know, we had SST a few, about a month ago, wasn't it, Paul, that they got mm -hmm. acquired? So. Yeah, uh, you we're seeing a lot of, you know, especially in the software side. And that, that was also to established companies with uh, ProAgrica being established, obviously, as a global player. But... Um, but uh, I think those those are those are really probably destined to destined to go places and succeed. Um, we'll see, you know some of the some of the players that aren't aren't haven't been around as long as some of the acquisitions we've seen in that front are, are a little more tenuous I think. But uh, but again you know data data and and data management um, those are all been been very difficult markets uh, from a standpoint of making money and players trying to find niches and places where they can complement one another. Um, either companies are at, not in data getting into data or two data companies with, with something that has complementary value. Um, so uh, I think this is a good one. We'll see where it goes. All right. Well, speaking of consolidation, Paul, a couple of uh, tidbits to share on that front. Uh, found out this week that uh, I know we had mentioned that Bayer was looking to uh, maybe offload a few more assets to grease the wheels to get approval for the Monsanto deal. Uh, found out this week that they've uh, entered into exclusive talks with BASF to sell their entire vegetable seed line to the company. So, Paul, that would put uh, BASF firmly into the seed uh, segment. Uh, as you remember, they're going to buy the Liberty Link uh, seeds uh, from uh, Bayer as well once this deal goes down so uh, this would give them uh, you know more in their seed portfolio interesting just trying to it's just realign all the stuff has to realign to get these deals done um, there's still a lot of challenges ahead I think for for breeding and for for, for biotechnology and, and, and things so moving forward but um, yeah just more necessary necessary realignment yeah, but at, under the heading of one consolidation that may not happen, I know we reported about a month ago we were talking about uh, ADM and Bungie perhaps getting their businesses together. Uh, but we found out this week that those talks have apparently stalled, Paul, uh, and no one is quite certain why and if uh, negotiations will start up again. So there's now speculation that that merger will not take place and that Bungie may be back on the market and perhaps uh, Glencore, who uh, coveted them a while back, may step back into the picture. So we'll have to see what happens there. Interesting. Obviously, something everyone's watching very closely is <laughs> how, how crops are moving around once yeah. they get upstream. So, And um, speaking of crops... The final I'm thing to share. Glad to give help me, you. Give, give me nice transitions without here. Without even trying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know we reported last week uh, from the Commodity Classic, had the little clip of Sonny Perdue, the Secretary of Agriculture, talking about not uh, being in favor of any, uh, any type of uh, uh, regulation that would uh, curb uh, agriculture's ability to do business around the world. 
found out, Paul, this week that, uh, you know, of course, the North American Free Trade Agreement is one of the things that's been discussed, perhaps maybe uh, being renegotiated or pulled off the table by the Trump administration. Uh, found out this week that Mexico, uh, in the last year, is kind of hedging their bets against NAFTA maybe going away, and they had imported 583,000 metric tons of corn from Brazil in 2017. Now, what made that significant, of course, that's a 1,000 percent increase from the amount of corn they got from Brazil in 2016. And primarily, Paul, they were doing this because the government in Mexico was saying we uh, would like an alternative just in case NAFTA goes away to U.S. corn. So this could be bad for the U.S. corn guys as uh, perhaps prices might be looking to drop if there's not the demand for Mexico. Yeah. Just, you know, they're trying to protect their interests and the you unintended know, consequences of uncertainty. And when it comes to food, people won't fool around. They're going to try to lock in what they can. Amen. Well, that's it for this edition of Crop Life Retail Week. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week.